Hey guys, okay, so th in this video we're gonna take a look at how to make custom delays using your timers and this is gonna be obviously a lot simpler than the PWM because you're just gonna use your timer as a basic uh, counter and so um, you're going to ultimately you're gonna make three functions and they're all small you can have a global variable your this is all the code to set up the timer these are two functions one for a delay microseconds one for delay milliseconds and an interrupt handler for your timer and as you can see it's basically two lines of code three lines in each of these and that's about it so let's uh, let's go through the code and let's uh well first let me give you a rundown of exactly what what it is that you're you're going to uh what's going to be happening so we're gonna set up our timer with a, a specific frequency, and uh, the frequency is gonna how that affects you is it's gonna affect your resolution, right? So here's what's gonna happen: we're gonna have the timer count up to whatever auto reload reg, um, value we put, and then once it counts up and it overflows down to zero, it's going to make a, it's gonna trigger an interrupt. In that interrupt what we're going to do is update a variable increment that global variable that we'll have and then again it'll count up overflow at the overflow gen generates the interrupt and in the interrupt routine we will update again that variable keep incrementing it now suppose that we have a frequency so that the time from here to here in other words our period is one millisecond right so that means we're gonna generate an interrupt every one millisecond so if you wanted to create a delay for three milliseconds you would wait till that variable the one that we're incrementing is equal to three because that means three milliseconds have passed right if we're updating our variable at every overflow event at every interrupt and from here to here is one millisecond then when that variable variable equals three, that means three milliseconds have passed, and there you go, you just made a three millisecond delay. So what I'm gonna do in this code is I'm gonna make the, um, and then that one millisecond um, period means that your frequency is uh, one kilohertz, right? So if you want more resolution, in other words, you want a smaller delay, you gotta, make your frequency faster so then these periods right here can be a lot smaller so I'm gonna do a uh, frequency of one megahertz so each one of these it's going to be one microsecond so then you can have microsecond resolution and every time you have a thousand of these you'll have um, one millisecond you know what I mean so then you can be so then we'll be able to write a delay function for microseconds and a delay function for milliseconds now these interrupts are happening every single time that your your uh, your counter overflows so if, if I have a 1 megahertz uh, frequency like I said this is gonna happen 1 million times per second now that's bad because if, if I'm doing other things and this interrupt is happening even though I'm not using the delay function it's just gonna slow my processor down you know um, so there's no need to increment this variable if I'm not actually using it in an, an actual delay so what we're gonna do in our code is we're gonna have it so we turn off the timer when we're not using the delay function and once we call the delay function in that delay function we actually start the counter and then these interrupts will happen. We'll enable the interrupts, we'll enable everything, but we'll, we'll disable the counter so those interrupts will not be happening um, unless we're in an actual delay function, okay? So let's go look at our code in conjunction with our data sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the registers. And I'm again, I'm using timer four that I've been using for these tutorials. So it's a general purpose timer, timer four. And we'll go to the registers and we're there. Okay, so first things first, um, obviously we're gonna enable the clock for that for that timer. 
we don't have to enable any pins because again we're not using any there's no output here there's no PWM there's nothing we're just looking at the the value that's being counted and all that stuff so if I want a frequency of one of my timer to be one megahertz it's gonna be remember from my previous tutorial it's gonna be uh, 72 megahertz which is the frequency of my uh, my microcontroller divided by the frequency that I want so you can see that open the calculator here we have 72 million divided by 1 million which is that 1 megahertz that I want uh, this gives me a value of 72 so I have to make this uh, 72 so that means my prescaler is going to be 0 basically um, and I have to put something in the auto reload register I can't put 0 here and 72 here because then when we're counting we're going to be counting up to 0 and nothing's going to happen basically so your, your auto reload register cannot be empty so I'm going to put 0 in the prescaler because that just means it's going to skip the prescaler and it's just going to divide the peripheral clock by the uh, auto reload register giving us our, our frequency uh, back to the code so prescaler is going to be 0 the auto reload is going to be uh, 72 and we'll have our 1 megahertz frequency so now let's go into um, the register so first we'll go to control register 1 okay and here we go this is the URS what the hell is it there we go so this bit right here is bit number 2 and it says update request source <clears throat> this means that what what can generate an update uh, counter overflow or setting the UG bit or update generation through slave whatever whatever the point is when you set this to a 1 you're telling it that only overflow and underflow can generate an, an, an interrupt basically an update interrupt so we're gonna set that because uh, I don't want this generating an interrupt I don't want this or anything else gener generating interrupts other than overflow or underflow and this is and for our case it's going to be overflow because we're we're counting up and then it's gonna overflow and come back to the bottom so we'll set a 1 into this uh, bit 2 in the control register 1 that's what that line does now this line I'm sorry let me make this bigger so that's that and then this line we're gonna actually enable that update interrupt this is the UIE and that's all uh, that's in this other register right here UIE which is bit 0 and it says update interrupt enable so update interrupt enable is a one in that bit okay and all these other things are for capture or compare which we're not using in here in this uh, for this purpose so nothing gets set there and this one is update generation um, as you remember from our previous uh, videos we have to set this bit every time we're using the timer for some reason I'm not exactly sure what it does if you look at that um, if you look at this here this UG bit it says reinitialize the counter and generate an update of the registers okay what I'm guessing is that when you're setting all these registers they're not maybe it's not taking effect immediately until you do this uh, until you set this bit then it kind of just says okay so these are your final settings and then you know sets it for you like actually does it so I'm guessing that's what this bit does but anyways when you update this bit it generates an interrupt actually um, that's also the reason why we set this bit to one because I don't want to generate an interrupt uh, no it was this one which is the one that we just the URS yes you see here on this URS bit it says that setting that UG bit would also generate an interrupt I don't want to generate an interrupt right now while I'm making my settings so I that's why I, we that's another reason why we put this one so only overflow and underflow can generate that interrupt which is that first line we did right here okay so we do that and then 
the only thing that's left to do as far as the timer is concerned is to up uh, enable the timer but like I said before we're not going to enable it right now because we only want to enable it during um, actual delay functions the last thing we're going to do uh, at least in our main and again you can take all of this and put it in a little function in itself and just call it in init timer or something so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to enable that um, int we enable the interrupt right on the timer so the timer is going to generate interrupts but those interrupts have to go through the NVIC and what we're going to do here is go and go ahead and enable that interrupt line on the NVIC now this function NVIC underscore enable IRQ um, I don't know why it's underlined I think uh, microvision does this but this is a function that it's not anywhere in our main or in our header file this is actually in this core CM3 this is a function this file has defines and functions that are relative to the core. The core is provided by ARM. The rest of the stuff is provided by STM32. So this file has functions that you can use to uh, change things in the actual core of the CPU. So since the NVIC is part of the core, then that's why we have to um, call this function to enable that IRQ um in the actual core so this function is again developed by arm now how did i know this is the number because this um is defined by the um by the vendor and you can find your irq numbers in your startup fi starter file this uh, startup mds.s here you'll find your irq handlers and all this other other stuff um where is the actual oh no yeah okay i'm sorry no this is the iq handler the actual irq number is in fact in your header file that stm32 dot this header file right here the one that you always include in your main this file up here in there is where that uh the irq number is defined and you can just scroll down until you find the one that you need so the one we're going to use is the IRQ for uh, here timer four? You just copy that and place it into the argument of your uh, NVIC enable. Okay, so once you have that actual um, interrupt enable, you have to actually define that interrupt function, and it has to be a specific name. So you go into like I just said this uh, startup file. And in there, it, had, it has all the handlers defined, and they're defined as weak. So in other words, this is a function that's defined as weak, which means that if you redefine this function, the one that you defined will be the stronger one, and then this one will be ignored. So you basically just copy this right here, the one that you look, you see they're all labeled. So you copy the timer for function. You copy that and that will be the name of your function right there and it has to be void and I'm not sure if it can take arguments either way it shouldn't take arguments so all this function uh, is going to do right is first you should check that your um, interrupt you should check the status register for any anytime you use an IRQ handler function you should check the status register for that peripheral to see what generated your interrupt but since we have that bit that we set this one that only overflow and underflow will generate interrupt I'm not really gonna check it because I know for a fact that the only reason I'm in this interrupt is because an overflow occurred so there's really no need for me to check it right but if you're using a, a you know different peripheral and you're in the uh, um, interrupt handler routine, you should always check the status register to see what generated the interrupt. But in this case, we know what's generated because we made it so only one thing can generate it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna have this va this variable called my ticks, which I initialized up here. It, it's just an integer. It's my ticks equals zero. So it's gonna increment it, and after it increments that variable we're gonna go and we're gonna clear that flag in the status register right because this is that here is the status register and this UIF flag 
update interrupt flag that means an update occurred and by update they mean interrupt I mean they mean overflow or underflow in our case it's overflow so that means an, an overflow occurred and we can clear it by software by writing a zero to it see it is cleared by software uh, see this uh, flag is set at overflow or underflow so we have to clear that flag if you don't clear that fra that flag your um it'll never leave the uh this uh function here okay so we clear the flag uh, and that's it so then let's look now at our actual delay functions right so what do we have here let's say um, we call this function delay dus and that means delay microseconds and I have a uh, an argument here of delay of, of microseconds so you would call this flag and you would pass it a number what's it going to do first it's gonna en enable the uh, the timer because remember we did not enable it up here we did not enable it so the timers off so there's no interrupts happening right so now we enable it now the second we enable it, those interrupts starts happening and ticks starts incrementing. And I, right here I make ticks equal zero so that it starts at zero, right? And again, the, 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 um, the, now this is happening, right? It's still been happening, but now I put it to zero, now it's happening again. And this is going up in value. Now, so long as that my ticks that little value that's incrementing is less than the value that we passed it it's going to stay in this while loop so if we pass it a thousand it's going to stay in this while loop until my ticks is equal to 1000 in other words when this has happened 1000 times then it will exit this while loop and then this right here turns off the timer so in, that, in essence, we've delayed for 1,000 microseconds. That's exactly how this works, okay? Milliseconds, it's going to be the same exact thing, except it's, we're going to take milliseconds because, remember, the resolution of our timer, this, this is happening every microsecond. So milliseconds is nothing more than uh, microseconds times 1,000. So if you pass a num number here, 4, that's going to be 4,000 microseconds. So in the in the milliseconds function, this is delay milliseconds. I'm going to take the number, let's say four. I want to delay for four milliseconds. Four times a thousand is four thousand. So I need four thousand microseconds to be to actually get to this four milliseconds. And again, we're going to stay in this loop until we've uh, until ticks has incremented to four thousand, and then we'll turn off our, our timer. And uh, and that's basically that's the the, the gists of it, um, and this is for my debugging purposes. So the the code for this it's simple, it's small, and it's clean, and it's efficient because again we're not the timer is not even on while we're not using it, and that's what I like about the the code. So if we look here at um, as you can see, it's printing out every every second. It's printing hello world because I have a delay of milliseconds of 1000 now I could change this to delay microseconds microseconds and uh, to have the same delay of 1000 of one second it would be 1 million microseconds so this will give me this same um, same, same effect See, so it has the same exact effect of one second, but now I have a microsecond resolution. So if you have an application that requires, you know, just a, a very tiny delay of a microsecond or two, this uh, this is uh, this works out. Now I'm going to go ahead and show another way of doing this uh, using the cystic timer. Um, I'm going to pause and get that ready for you. Okay, so now I went ahead and I added um, the only things that you need to also do custom delay, what well, kind of custom delay, um, using the cystic timer. 
Now the difference with this is that you only have a resolution of milliseconds. So you can only do milliseconds. You can't do microseconds with this. Um, all I've added is I've added uh, a different variable called um, msTix. As you can see right here, msTix and a function called delay milliseconds, ms. And I added also a handler, an IRQ handler for the Cystic, which is called right here Cystic Handler. It does the same thing as the other one. It just increments that variable, right? It doesn't have to clear any flags or anything. And then the delay function does the same thing as the other one, that it starts MS takes to at zero, and then it stays in this loop as long as that your takes is less than the value that you passed it. So it's this, and that's it. There's no registers, no timers you have to set up or nothing. You just, just that. But you do have to call this function. You have to take call it cystic config. And again, this is a function that has to do with your core. And it's in this, it's in this file. You have to call your system config and you say you tell it you want the system core clock divided by 1000. Now that does not mean it's going to be uh, 72, what is it, 72,000 or whatever it is, 72 million divided by a thousand. It does not mean that because it's gonna take this whatever numbers from here and it's gonna do some math so that you get a one millisecond uh, tick okay so yeah so you just do whatever your clock is divided by a thousand that will give you a one millisecond uh, tick and then that's it and then you can just call the delay milliseconds function and uh, as you can see right here and you'll have the same sort of um, the same sort of uh, the same delay that you had with the other one so let's change this text here's my thing right now it's printing that let's change this to just high Oops. Okay. and upload and then open this up there you go high so you can see it's just doing it every one second and I'm only using this new delay millisecond function that corresponds to the MS ticks and just these two little functions now I noticed something and if you guys can help me figure this out when I was looking at my other function this one the microseconds and, and the milliseconds um, according to my calculations I should have a 1 megahertz frequency if I put 72 here but if you look at this carefully it's not doing it once a second it's doing it twice a second so it's, it's, it's fast and if I change this to 144 which is twice let's comment this out uh, twice 72 oh no 172 times yeah 172 times 2 is, is 144 So if I put 144, then I do get my uh, accurate one second. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Yeah, that's that's accurate. So in fact, it seems that um, I'm not sure why. Why why that is? I have to figure that out. It also has to do, I'm guessing, with because again, these uh, delays are not going to be exact because we're not taking into account how many cycles it takes to increment a number to go in and do this to perform basically an op and and not operations. And then in our actual here, we're not accounting for how long it takes to do this, how long it takes to do that. How long it takes to do this multiplication? You know what I mean. So you're talking. Well, we are talking nanoseconds probably, but we're not accounting for any of that. So you gotta understand, you're not gonna get 100% exact timing, but it will be pretty good though. So yeah, I have to figure that out why. But either way, that's basically how you make uh, delay functions. And if you guys have any questions or insights or if I did something wrong uh, please let me know and uh, enjoy the video